Good morning, miners. Opening day here at Mining Disrupt. My goal today is to get in there and see what all these hardware vendors are bringing to the table this year and what they have up and coming over the next few months. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, just got inside, guys, and uh, man, people slowly trickling in right now. I think a lot of people were out a little too late last night enjoying the pre-party, but behind us here, the title sponsor of Mining Disrupt, we do have the team over at Pegapool. They're a newer pool into the crypto mining scene. They really push that green energy and that green initiative. So let's go over and talk to them and learn a little bit more about Pegapool. All right, guys, so I'm here at the Pegapool booth with Hazib. How's it going? All good, buddy. How about yourself? Oh, I'm having a blast. So guys, okay. they have some crazy marketing going on right now. They're talking about 0% pool fees for Bitcoin miners. Tell me a little bit about that because there's a catch at the end that really surprised me. Yeah, so we are soft miners ourselves. We've got yep. operations all around the world. So we kind of understand what time the industry is going through right now, Bitcoin price being low, yeah. the margins are tight for everyone, especially small scale miners and everyone. So we just want to help out really. So what we're doing is basically, we're saying there will be no mining fees if you join our pool okay. until Bitcoin price reaches 60,000. 60,000. That's crazy. I, I'll take 60,000 right now. So that's uh, awesome. You and my pay, uh, I'll pay the full fees yeah, exactly, at 60,000. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. So yeah. like as a home miner in my community, you know, we're always looking at these little fees that really affect our bottom line and our profit. So not having a pool fee till 60,000 is also, also builds a little loyalty there, which is great. Right, yeah. So on top of that, you guys got this really cool giveaway event going on right now at the event, giving away one whole Bitcoin if you're here, right? Correct. How yeah. does that work? How do, how do we get in on that? Yeah, so it's very simple. If you are in the Mining District Conference right now, just pop over to you our You better be stand. here, come check you it out. be here, yeah, you gotta come here. And we have our, you know, iPads, we'll just yep. sign you up. It's a really simple process, your name, yep. your phone number, your email, we verify your details, and that's it, you've entered the yep. uh, uh, competition. Yep. Uh, what you have to guess is, though, is the number of transactions yep. that will be included in the blog. That yes. would be around the giveaway time. Okay. So, as long as you guess that number. Which I is guessed 8,800. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, oh, so, come yeah. on, 8,800. Yeah. I want to win that Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, so it's between one and ten thousand. If okay. one number's taken, you can't take that one. Yeah. You have to be something else. Yeah. Yep. But now, guys, you know, really come down. It's really simple, and it's your chance to win one bitcoin. So you know. Guys, come down here. If you're at Mining Disrupt and you have the availability, come on down, talk with you guys, enter in on the one Bitcoin giveaway as well. Go over to Pegapool, guys, and get on it. Zero percent pool fees. Hasib, I appreciate your time today. Nice to meet you too, buddy. Thank you. Take care. All right, guys, I am here with Chris from Musk Miners. What's going on? Not too much. Just enjoying the, the conference. 100 percent So guys, if you guys aren't familiar with their team, who's this Musk Miners guys? They do two things. You get your ASIC uh, procurement through them, as well as hosting. So let's talk about the hosting a little bit here. So I go to your site, mustminers.com. I find an ASIC that I want, I buy it through you guys, which is awesome. Yep. Next step, I wanna go ahead and do hosting. 
How does that work? Help, walk me through it a little bit. So we would actually prefer if you would reach out first. Do you Whoa, want to I don't want to reach out. Come on now. Don't no, no. reach out? Yep, okay. Because yeah. if I want to do one or I want to do 100, right? Yeah, we want to make sure you get the right price and get to the right facility that works for you. Perfect. Um, so, you know, we'd prefer if you'd reach out to us, either give us a call, shoot us an email. Um, we'll find the best ASICs for you uh, at the quantity that you want, the best facility, and then you know, from there we'll discuss purchases and it's pretty much hands off from there for you. Yeah. You know, we'll get your pool set up, get the machines to the facility, get them online within a couple weeks and you'll be mining Bitcoin, Litecoin, whatever, whatever you'd like. Yeah, now you have farms available for hosting, I feel like, everywhere, right? Yeah, across the U.S. Okay. You know, we got a handful. Which is fantastic. I mean, I think that's great because as a miner, I kind of like to decide, like, where my ASICs go. You know, it's my investment, it's my asset, so having the ability to go, oh, I want to go on the West Coast, or East Coast, or, you know, Midwest. Texas, or Midwest, all Midwest. right, guy over here. Yeah. Don't you know. uh, <laughs> awesome. So guys, if you're interested, go over to mustminers.com, check them out if you need any ASICs or hosting. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, thanks, man. All right, guys, I'm here from Ben from Locotech. What's going on, Ben? How's it going? Thanks for meeting with me. So, here's the first step. We've all been looking, we've been wondering about, you know, the, your product lines. The first one up here we have is their USB miner, yes. which we have right well, here. It's a USB demo unit. Demo yeah. unit, I love it. So it's for us to validate the silicon. Perfect. So we'll talk about validating in a quick second. Yep. So tell us kind of what we're looking at here, because you know traditionally when you think of like a USB miner, right, you're yep. thinking more your traditional like your your Bitcoin ASICs would yeah. be, right? Your little ones there. Okay, great. But this is a little bit different. So tell me about it. So basically, this is our test boards. So we basically, we uh, took early stage, we did the MPW run at Global Foundries. Okay. And uh, we got the silicon back, now we're testing, we're going through the validation phase. Okay, and, and what's the value of the validation phase? It basically proves that the simulations that we have promised, the core functionality functions as is. Good for you guys, okay. And uh, it's, it's gonna be explosive once validation comes through because we, it scales linear. Okay. So basically, this will be, about 250 of the ASICs yep. of these, and then it'll be a compute tile with it, as we promised with the you know real-time diagnostics, yep. the uh, gradient descent or uh, degradation to where it'll actually turn off the tile. If it's okay. not hashing or if the raceway goes down, it'll turn off a quarter of the ASIC. That's or if the crazy. core functionality goes down, it'll turn off that ASIC completely and pass the power to the next uh, chip. So you don't have that daisy chain ladder anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, simply put, you don't have any waste power, so you don't need to repair it. Yeah, so. that's fantastic. So what hash rate are we looking at? At and what watts are we looking at? For for this unit here? For this unit here, it's basically an expanded design, so yep. it's about eight times the size of a single tile Crazy. of the 250, yeah. but that allows us to dive in deeper to make sure that it works um, yep. during validation. Yep. So we're probably looking at a few kilo hash, and then uh, it, it's not gonna be using any power really. Okay. All. But all that measurement and stuff will come in, we'll be uh, informing the market once that's complete. Coming in here soon, yeah. which is awesome. So ideally with this USB miner, uh, you're gonna have the board inside of this uh, enclosure. Correct. Right? And then how is this gonna wire to a PC? Well, no, for this, I mean, these, since this is the yep. demo USB unit yep. and the YouTubers like yourself, yep. we'll be uh, basically after validation comes in, we'll be producing about 50 to 100 of these. We'll get them out to you guys. Yep. And basically, I'll, you know, I made this case myself. You just, yeah. it fits oh, in really? Part. Good yeah. for you. Okay. So you just literally, uh, I 3D print them out at home. Okay. And I'll be uh, sending this out with that USB miner in it. Yep. And so. it does like a Type C into USB yeah. into a computer. Yes. Correct. Right. You download a driver and the software. We actually powered or uh, partnered up with the uh, company Powerpool. Okay. Uh, Ruben's the owner. He's actually flew him here today. So his. Uh, oh really? Okay. We had him do all the tech documents and stuff. So once validation comes in. All he needs is the uh, updated library. Okay. For it, uh, basically, update the you know software that he developed and start mining any third-party pool. Man, so these are coming to fruition now, which is awesome. I yes. know you're excited about yes. that, which is good. So we have these coming out here in in the near future. We got some time, yeah. but near future. Uh, and then same thing about the hash blade too, right? Yes. The hash blade is it going to be? Were you envisioning? Are you going to be the hash blade in this unit around that same time, or what, what's kind of the game plan for your also, team? Uh, the game plan is is get through validation first. Once we know that it's okay. scale linear. The yep. Commercial ASIC will we'll have the 100% net list come out in a few months. Okay. And then we're still looking at Q4 right now until we inform the market uh, differently. Oh wow! So and Q4 that, is like around the market, like it, right around yeah, this whole. Yeah, so I'd probably suspect it'll probably be around the end of Q4. Okay. So it could leak over into Q1. Sure, you never know. Until we know, we know. Yep, so. that is fantastic. So if people want to look into this more. Where can they go to learn more about Locotech? You can go to locotech.no. And uh, you can sign up for pre-orders there. And awesome. uh, you're only going to get one email and or two. Yeah. Uh, 
one, the other one might be, hey, we successfully completed the validation. Yeah, because you want to know when you can yeah. start, yeah, which and is then, uh, fantastic. And we're also prioritizing the people that sign up for pre-orders that have actually okay. been following us for the uh, amount of time. Because when we open uh, pre-orders, nice. we'll put it out to the subscribers first, 14 yep. days later after everyone's paid, then we'll open it up to the public. That's great. So. Yeah, eager to get my hands on one of these, working with Ben here, guys, so we can test it out and show it off to the community. In the near future, we'll see when it happens. Ben, thank you for your time. Hey, it was a pleasure, man. Appreciate Thanks it. for stopping by. All right, guys, we spotted the team over at Jingle Mining here with their Jazz Miners. I've heard a rumor they have an Ethereum Classic Miner that actually does Zill as well, and it looks like they have a few ASICs here. Let's go over and talk to them and take a look. All right, guys, I am here with Candy from Jingle Mining. How's it going? I'm doing good. Hi, everybody. I'm Candy from Jingle Mining. How are you doing today? So guys, we're here, they have two units here that they're just debuting here. They're gonna be dropping very, very soon. Mm -hmm. So first off, we have the X16Q. So this yeah. is a new unit, so tell us a little bit about it and what makes it so different from previous units. Actually, the previous unit, the X4 series miner, only with the 5, 5G RAM. So this one with 8G, so okay. 3, 3G big than So bigger, bigger mem than, larger yeah. memory. Yeah. And Great the, job. And you, you guys might already know um, the X4 series miner needs 30 minutes to present the hash rate, but yep. this one only uh, saves to six to seven minutes a minute. Wow. You get, we, you and and that's because of the chip, right? Yeah, the, the chip, chip difference. Design. Okay, so yeah, so you go from 30 to 40 minutes down to five, yeah. six, or seven minutes or yeah. so, Additional which is great. Day, it support dual mining, Delacola, yeah. That's huge. A lot of home miners, a lot of GPU miners I know, they do a lot of that with their graphics cards. Mm -hmm. They'll mine one thing and then it'll pivot over to Zilliqa. Yeah. The fact that this does that's great because I have two other units. I'm excited to get this one doing that. Yeah. Now, one thing I noticed on this unit is that it's wireless. Yeah. The so wireless now you have the ability to really put it anywhere because it's not loud. It puts off a little bit of heat, but nothing crazy. Yeah, the noise is very quiet, super silent, very friendly for home miners. You That's can great. put whatever you like, your bedroom or living room, no matter where you want to, want it there. Yeah. So then this one uses was it 1.9 about 1.9 uh, megawatts or better, gigawatts yeah. actually yeah. or gigahash. I'm sorry, yeah. gigawatts, um, gigahash. Yeah. And uh, what is the watts on this unit though? The, uh, it's it's only 620 watts. Wow, yeah. okay. But actually you can overclock things to higher hash rate. Frequency, like or change your frequency, yeah. change yeah. the frequency. This time it comes out with three work modes. So oh, ener really? energy mode and balance mode and performance mode. Performance mode me means you can like overclock things to more than 2G, yeah. Wow, I didn't realize that, that's fantastic. So this one's great, and these are shipping in the next few weeks, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. in like um, two or three weeks, yeah, okay. first batch. And yeah. then this monster right here, yeah. the X16P, Yeah. so this one's 5.8, Yeah. and do you remember the watts on this guy? This one is like uh, three times hash rate higher than this one, right? Yeah, I mean, the, huge difference. But the problem is the if you, you are thinking the noise is quite a big issue, so yep. you might consider this one. This one is uh, the X16P model. It's like 85 decibel, so it's yeah. pretty loud. Yeah, yeah, I mean, everything I've seen. This one is more your traditional ASIC style. Yeah. It's louder, Industrial, cooler. Yeah. A lot more hash rate, though, on this one yeah. versus this one here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, totally different. More home miner. This is more if you have a dedicated space. Yeah. You can handle the noise, the heat, and everything yeah. like that, which is great. Yeah. Awesome. Guys, go over and check them out at jinglemining.com. Check out a link directly down below. Thanks, Candy. Guys, I'm here with Daniel Keller from Flux. How's it going, Dan? It's going good, man. All right, Busy. so let's talk it. <laughs> proof of useful work. Yeah. Talk about it. Where are we at today with the project? Absolutely. Well, you can see that proof of useful work dashboard yep. is running yep, today. That awesome. We're doing AI as well, so we have a Minecraft server running here as well. Oh. So we are we are in the final short strokes of getting the app, all the software packaged up and getting out to everyone. Wow. So that they can benchmark and they can get ready for proof yeah. of useful work. Yeah. So our target was the end of this year, beginning of next, and we'll okay. be right on that target to release. Wow. So Okay. So essentially, it's got everything in there and even some surprises. So oh. you know, our first version will roll out with multiple asset support. Okay. So any coin that you want to mine, yep. you can do it with proof of use of work. Okay. And you can be in the queue and ready to go when, whenever a job comes in. Yep. So if you're not familiar with what proof of use of work sure. does, essentially what it does is it allows you to provide decentralized compute to large-scale companies or even small-scale companies, yeah. universities. 
So it fixes a major glaring issue right now in, in, in compute. The compute demands are insane right now. Yeah. So ChatGPT is spending $300,000 a day. Oh, it's crazy. So right now, um, the benchmark tool coming out. Yes. When's that going to be and where can we get access to it? So we have a, we're doing a, like a, a slow release yeah. right now. So yeah. if, it, you know, if somebody wants to participate, yep. come into our Discord, hit okay. us up, and we're getting release candidates out. Perfect. Both of these units that are sitting right now, we wanted to make sure that we showed that anyone could run proof of use and work. Yep. These, are, these are both running proof of use and work at this particular point in time. Uh, yeah, I saw. We, we built these last night. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a crap shoot, but it worked out great. That is um, awesome. But, but really, honestly, it, there's two tiers of it. There's the, the, the really the home providers that want to yep. want to provide infrastructure. They have computers, they have graphics cards, and they want to participate. Uh, and then we, of course, have our enterprise solution, which is down here, which we'll go take. Yeah, a look we'll at. take a look at that in a minute. Awesome. All right. So tell me what we're looking at. This is our Octa Miner server. This is a Flux edition. Okay. This is specifically built for proof of use to work. So right now you can run ten graphics cards in there. We have some amazing specs on it, which you can throw up and yeah, hundred sure, percent. Yep. Right? Yep. But this allows people to have a smaller footprint and be yeah. more into the uh, uh, into the enterprise compute market. Yep. So you know, basically, this is really a what one sole sole purpose. It's yeah. mining and doing proof of use to work. It's not a computer. Yeah, it's, it's preset, ready to go. Yep. All the hardware is there. Yep. You know, you don't have to mess around with building your own. It's yep. all, and, and I think that's also, as you said, more your enterprise level. You're stepping into it. Yep. So you need a rig ready for proof of use to work. This is it. And GPUs, all you need is GPUs at this Absolutely. point. Absolutely. And and this is really for the home miners because a lot of people say, well, what about the home miners? Yeah. This has got a very small footprint, yeah. very good air circulation. Yep. So if you're running your cards and you want to have a nice system set up, this yep. is where you want to do it at. Okay. So, uh, very you cool. can check, check it out. Uh, it'll, it's on the Octo Miner serve, uh, okay. uh, site. website now. Yep. You can check it out. Price point, I'm not completely positive. Uh, we won't hold you to it's it. It's a little bit expensive. Okay. There's no doubt about it, but it's yep. definitely a good product. So. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. Awesome, buddy. Thank, thank you. you. What's going on, guys? So I am here with Bitchview Trip and Carter. How's it going, buddy? Oh, man. It's been real today. It's been uh, good. Amazing event here. But I found him and I got him for like three to five minutes. So let's see what we can get out of him. So. A question I've always thought about, I followed you for a while now, yeah. and it's one of those things that I think my viewers struggle with a lot too, and home miners or mid-sized miners is, mm -hmm. you know, the step of going from GPU mining to ASICs. Yep. Yep. So for you, you know, when I, when I got in the space, you had a large GPU mining farm. Mm -hmm. What made you, or what did you look at, or what indicators did you see to all of a sudden go, mm -hmm. I need to start to pivot, and here's why. Well, yeah, I think if people see, especially when you can see this in the videos, that's what's great about being part of the videos. You <laughs> yeah. kind of see, yep. like, why is he checking out some ASICs? Yep. So a couple big things happen, obviously. Being part of some of those Ethereum development calls, yep. and luckily, you know, they invited me in. I got to hear kind of where they were going. And knowing that Ethereum was one of the largest, you know, holders of yep. uh, the GPU mining uh, hash rate, looking at the risk there, the profile. Like, oh, when is proof of stake gonna happen? What is gonna be the impact of GPU mining? And then looking at our capability, like at the farm, sure. having you know power there, and that started around March of 21. So, okay. you, I mean, it was right when everything started yeah. to rifle yeah. up, and it was like right away we're like, okay, everything's starting to take off, but they're pushing hard and they're getting capitalized to try to move proof of stake on. There's incentive. There's incentive. Yeah. And then you had the, the culmination of what was happening in China. And in, in May of 21, when China was like, we're shutting down, we're cutting the cord. Banning everything. I was yep. like, wait a minute here, things are gonna happen here. Mm -hmm it's gonna change the, the, the game to where we can be part of that because mm -hmm. these miners are gonna come over to the US, yep. are gonna be, they're gonna be looking for the selling because you, mind you, the incentives for ASICs for the longest time was, there were a lot of them produced in China. Yeah. Um, yep. if, even if some of the fab work you know, from TSMC was done in Taiwan, it was going straight over to China, they were fabricating there, and then they were staying in China. Like, yep. It made sense from a logistics yep. standpoint. I don't have to ship them that far, people want it, there's a market for them, um, so when that 70% or so started to move away, we all started talking like, we should look at this. Yeah. Let's do a small sample. I always do, I say this a lot. I've channel. heard this on a lot of your videos. Like, crawl, test walk, it run. out, you know, test yeah, it out. Yeah, it's that crawl, walk, run, yeah. right? Like, let's not go YOLO, let's, let's, let's try it out. Let's understand, you know, how the management of it, how's mm -hmm. it gonna work at any level of scale? And can we handle it? Is it gonna yeah. be something that we can do? So. You know, like everybody bought at the central top, right? Yep. I mean, Bitcoin mining was about twelve thousand five hundred dollars oh. for each of the units. To, you know, uh, acquisition of about fifty-three miners. Yep. And then, 
you know, tried it out. Had them up in the farm. You guys yep. saw those videos out yeah, there. They were had great. them up there. Uh, you know, unpacking them, getting them up there, reconfiguring the farm, how to get reconfigured. Oh, a I remember I'm looking at videos of that. Off screen. Yeah. But yeah, or where we had to like readjust the farm to, to accommodate because the yeah, power totally profile different. was different, um, you know, and like try it out. So yeah. that's that, the real pivot was looking at the two things. The two big key pieces was, you know, Ethereum moving away. We knew that was going to happen. We were very skeptical of when it could happen. I was yep. actually here at Disrupt that, that N21 is wow. saying, I don't know if it's going to be a couple of Because they've been years. talking about it forever. So, they've been talking you know. about it forever, and there was yep. some existential risk. They had a lot of issues with the, like, the chain syncing up and stuff. And I thought, you know, are they really going to YOLO this network yeah. over and yeah. have a risk there? But, like, the inevitability was there. We've always known the inevitability was there since 2017. We thought it was going to happen in 2017. It's, you know, here and lo and behold, 21, you know, we're mm -hmm. looking at it happening. So it was like, okay, if this is actually going to go, we got to start to look at this. And yeah. we, we would talk on the channel about that. And then it was a crawl walk run. So once we got through that kind of phase and the market started to rescind, a lot of people would be like, wait a minute here, your, your ASIC price is just plummeted. Yeah. Your, your Bitcoin yep. price is going down to 16,000. Yep. You know, you're like going, Yep. What, or why would you continue with this? Why was the risk? But so it was, just the avenue it was going. Yeah, yeah it was absolutely. just the avenue it was going. You had the buildup in the U.S. We feel pretty comfortable from like we're say going to be at from a regulatory standpoint, just because I think once people start to, you, know, you always hear these words of like getting, uh, you know, orange pill. Right? Yeah. You know, like, like oh yeah. Once people start to really understand, this isn't like a scam. It's not a. Yeah. It's not uh, vaporware. It's real. And once yeah, people start right. to really see that then we have the confidence that, you know, if they, if they give it an honest listen and, you know, be, be critical of it, but mm -hmm. like when they get to it, they get to a place to where they start to realize, oh yeah, this is real. Sure. Yes, this can help, you know, the energy markets and balance certain things in certain areas. So it's like, we were looking at that in our own area, there was excess of power and started working those rates and trying to figure out, cause that's one of the most fundamental things is you got to work the rate structures to make sure it's, it's sustainable and it's going to last a while. It's not just yeah. that that rate's good for this year and it's not going to be, you know, years out, you know, mm -hmm. like you're going to get like, like a doubling of the rate, like work with the power companies and that. So we started that before we made that larger purchase, right? Before yeah. that five megawatts came online. So it was like, I have to make sure the power so rate is, 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 is as good as it can get. And then is it competitive with the rest of the country? Yeah. And luckily for us in our area, it was. Yeah. And we just started to build that out. And you still have to go through a lot of other things like zoning and, you know, make sure it's in an area that's not going to be It's not a people. quick thing. It's yeah, not a quick thing. Yeah. It took us, I mean, well, we had it deployed in the 53 at the farm in Wisconsin because we already had power and everything there in yeah. October of 21. And it took us conversations in through 22, the beginning of 22, to kind of cultivate that discussion. You're playing the long game, yeah. And it took an entire year for it. We wow. deployed in January of 23, right? So yeah. it, it took us a year to get the rate established, get everybody on the same page. We had to move substations once. Wow. Like we had that rigs. sounds so painful. <laughs> it was. And there's a lot of cost in that. Yeah, so when you start yeah. to add up, like, yeah, we got, we're able to buy miners way cheaper, you know. Sure, uh, sure. How many months later 15, or whatever? $15 yeah. per tera hash, $12 per tera hash around that range or what, what, what the spot prices, what we were getting at that time, which seemed way cheaper than the 50s and $70. Yeah. But like, we also had a lot of, uh, you know, cost up front, of yeah. like getting the, the containers, getting, mm -hmm. moving them a couple times. And you start summing that up, it takes a little longer, yeah. but like, it's about getting that first part started. Okay. You know, and you're going to have some pound of flesh, as it were, in the yeah. game yep. to understand some of those. And that best thing I think us as yeah. creators and, and informing people can do is share our experience, man. Yep. Like, yep. it's as real Document as it Document as much as you can. Yep. Document as much as you can. Share it with people. They'll be, and then hope that community is going to reciprocate that, right? Yep. Like, and digest it and it. takes it in and understands yeah. it. Because, yeah, I mean, from our conversation just here in a few minutes, biggest indicators I heard from you was the fact of, you looked for these flags yep. in order for you to pivot. And it was like, all right, Ethereum being the main source of profitability for yep. GPU miners, with it just a few inklings of it moving away, you were like, all right, it's time to move. And I think we as like home miners and even GPU miners still, you're still hopeful that oh, this absolutely. coin's gonna hold you in this coin. But once you get to a more large enterprise level, yep. you can't you can't live on hopium. You yeah, gotta, well you know? it's that and the liquidity. I mean like yeah. so you got liquidity system. I I, I see like we just talked to Flux. I think there's some very positive things in yep. that. I think use, proof of useful work, I don't think is 
not going to go away. I think yeah. there, there's an inertia behind that yep. because people really want to take compute and store and yeah. and democratize that in a way and use the payment rails of a network yep, like sure. Flux or any of these other coins that yeah. are really putting the effort in to you know grind out a solution that that there is a, a market participant that wants to buy the other counter side. Correct, right? on the other they, side of that marketplace. They yep. want to do that and like not get so caught up in the tokenomics and that piece of it of more of like is it providing a solution? Because I think it's going to be a solution-driven thing on the next bull run when it comes to GPU mining. Yes, I, I don't see think that. GPU minings are going to go away because you have this this natural amount of people, and it's such a gateway into the system. It for is. People. It's a stepping stone. You can find one of these videos from any of us yep. and, and like get lost in it for a night and be mining the, that night. A night, as he knows, like in a, a night. night in a single night. <laughs> you're you not watching one video. video. It's yeah, just you like you can find it in one night, and then you know maybe start it and you'll do two more videos and next thing you know, you've gone a week and you have some coin and you're like okay what do i do with this you know yep. and like that's the most visceral piece of being part of this community because it you know, like you can think of like oh there could be good money potential here yeah, but yeah. At, the, at the purest form of it it's like it's the tech stack and like is yeah. this doing something and that that pulls people in and circumstantially you, you yep. might be able to make some revenue on it yep. or build a company providing services and that sure. sort of thing so you know, I think that's really what it comes down to is that, you know, GPU mining community is still there. People think it's gone away. <clears throat> it's definitely came down in scale oh, yeah. a little. Size, <clears throat> scale, but the compute is still there and it's easily, you can easily stand it up and yeah. you just need a demand for it. Just like we had in the last bull run, the demand was there. Yep. So I think it'll return as well at some point, but it does, it needs that use case in yeah. order to kind of- Well, I think, I, I think it gets, you know, like there could, there's always a speculative run on yep. most things, right? And maybe that speculative run does incentivize people to build more and all yeah. that kind of stuff. It does yep. kind of pile on. Uh, but like on the next like uh, you know Bitcoin bull run, we may see you know one of these coins that are you know if it's Dynax, if it's uh, yep. Kadena, if it's Flox, if it's Raven, if it's any of these coins that really people start to attribute certain aspects to it and say, you know, well, wait a minute here, there's this other network here, yeah, and I want to be a participant in this, and I'm going to crawl, walk, run myself into this, and then now it starts to get some level of inertia, and then you get the speculators that might raise price, but you might get spikes there, you know, yep. and I always tell people, like, you never know, like, sometimes you can ask the questions, like, I don't understand how or why, <laughs> but, like, sometimes it gets that part in, right? Sure. Like, you'll get that inertia behind one of those coins, and it... And it you're going to have a community behind it. I mean, it's like the, sh the guys that are in Sheeb that isn't, yeah. uh, you know, a mineable coin, but there's a community behind that. There's people on so XRP. There seems to be a community behind everything now, which yeah. is really nice and convenient. No, I totally agree, yeah, which but is really I, cool. Yeah, I mean, from the proof of work side, though, I mean, I think uh, it's just about keeping your ear to the grind and understanding where things are at. I mean, yeah. we'll be talking to Joe Porter later here ourselves yeah. and seeing where the where it is from a DC standpoint and regulatory. But like, I think it's just, you know, for us, we saw it moving and wanted to re react to it. You're reading the market and reading mm -hmm. the scene, which is, I think, something for you comes with experience. Yep. And that's, I think, really what did that for you. So, dude, Carter, I appreciate yeah. your time. Thank you yes, very sir. much. Yep.